23.3 The Digestive System Lesson Objectives Identify the organs and functions of the digestive system. Outline the roles of the mouth, esophagus, and stomach in digestion. Explain how digestion and absorption occur in the small intestine. List functions of the large intestine. Describe common diseases of the digestive system. Identify classes of nutrients and their functions in the human body. Explain how to use my pyramid and food labels as tools for balanced eating. Vocabulary. Absorption. Bile. Body mass index. BMI. Chemical digestion. Digestion. Digestive system. Eating disorder. Elimination. Esophagus. Feces. Gallbladder. Gastrointestinal. GI. Tract. Large intestine. Liver. Macronutrient, mechanical digestion, micronutrient, mineral, my plate, my pyramid, nutrient, obesity, peristalsis, small intestine, stomach, villi, vitamin. Introduction. The respiratory and circulatory systems work together to provide cells with the oxygen they need for cellular respiration. Cells also need glucose for cellular respiration. Glucose is a simple sugar that comes from the food we eat. To get glucose from food, digestion must occur. This process is carried out by the digestive system. Overview of the digestive system. The digestive system consists of organs that break down food and absorb nutrients, such as glucose. Most of the organs make up the gastrointestinal tract. The rest of the organs are called accessory organs. The gastrointestinal tract. The gastrointestinal, GI, tract is a long tube that connects the mouth with the anus. It is more than 9 meters, 30 feet, long in adults and includes the esophagus, stomach, and small and large intestines. Food enters the mouth, passes through the other organs of the GI tract, and then leaves the body through the anus. The organs of the GI tract are lined with mucous membranes that secrete digestive enzymes and absorb nutrients. The organs are also covered by layers of muscle that enable peristalsis. Peristalsis is an involuntary muscle contraction that moves rapidly along an organ like a wave. Accessory Organs of Digestion Other organs involved in digestion include the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. They are called accessory organs because food does not pass through them. Instead, they secrete or store substances needed for digestion. Functions of the digestive system. The digestive system has three main functions. Digestion of food, absorption of nutrients, and elimination of solid food waste. Digestion is the process of breaking down food into components the body can absorb. It consists of two types of processes, mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is the physical breakdown of chunks of food into smaller pieces. This type of digestion takes place mainly in the mouth and stomach. Chemical digestion is the chemical breakdown of large, complex food molecules into smaller, simpler nutrient molecules that can be absorbed by the blood. This type of digestion begins in the mouth and stomach, but occurs mainly in the small intestine. After food is digested, the resulting nutrients are absorbed. Absorption is the process in which substances pass into the bloodstream where they can circulate throughout the body. Absorption of nutrients occurs mainly in the small intestine. Any remaining matter from food that cannot be digested and absorbed passes into the large intestine as waste. The waste later passes out of the body through the anus in the process of elimination. The start of digestion. Mouth to stomach. Does the sight or aroma of your favorite food make your mouth water? When this happens, you're getting ready for digestion. Mouth. The mouth is the first digestive organ that food enters. The sight, smell, or taste of food stimulates the release of digestive enzymes by salivary glands inside your mouth. The major salivary enzyme is amylase. It begins the chemical digestion of carbohydrates by breaking down starch into sugar. The mouth also begins the process of mechanical digestion. Sharp teeth in the front of the mouth cut or tear food when you bite into it. Broad teeth in the back of the mouth grind food when you chew. Food is easier to chew because it is moistened by saliva from the salivary glands. The tongue helps mix the food with saliva and also helps you swallow. 
After you swallow, the chewed food passes into the pharynx. Esophagus. From the pharynx, the food moves into the esophagus. The esophagus is a long, narrow tube that passes food from the pharynx to the stomach by peristalsis. The esophagus has no other digestive functions. At the end of the esophagus, a muscle called a sphincter controls the entrance to the stomach. The sphincter opens to let food into the stomach and then closes again to prevent food from passing back into the esophagus. Stomach. The stomach is a sac-like organ in which food is further digested both mechanically and chemically. Churning movements of the stomach's thick muscular walls complete the mechanical breakdown of food. The churning movements also mix food with digestive fluids secreted by the stomach. One of these fluids is hydrochloric acid. It kills bacteria in food and gives the stomach the low pH needed by digestive enzymes that work in the stomach. The main enzyme is pepsin, which chemically digests protein. The stomach stores the partly digested food until the small intestine is ready to receive it. When the small intestine is empty, a sphincter opens to allow the partially digested food to enter the small intestine. Digestion and Absorption The Small Intestine the small intestine is a narrow tube about 7 meters, 23 feet, long in adults. It is the site of most chemical digestion and virtually all absorption. The small intestine consists of three parts, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Digestion in the small intestine. The duodenum is the first and shortest part of the small intestine. Most chemical digestion takes place here, and many digestive enzymes are active in the duodenum. Some are produced by the duodenum itself. Others are produced by the pancreas and secreted into the duodenum. The liver is an organ of both digestion and excretion. It produces a fluid called bile, which is secreted into the duodenum. Some bile also goes to the gallbladder, a sac-like organ that stores and concentrates bile and then secretes it into the small intestine. In the duodenum, bile breaks up large globules of lipids into smaller globules that are easier for enzymes to break down. Bile also reduces the acidity of food entering from the highly acidic stomach. This is important because digestive enzymes that work in the duodenum need a neutral environment. The pancreas contributes to the neutral environment by secreting bicarbonate, a basic substance that neutralizes acid. Absorption in the small intestine The jejunum is the second part of the small intestine, where most nutrients are absorbed into the blood. The mucous membrane lining the jejunum is covered with millions of microscopic, finger-like projections called villi, singular villus. Villi contain many capillaries, and nutrients pass from the villi into the bloodstream through the capillaries. Because there are so many villi, they greatly increase the surface area for absorption. In fact, they make the inner surface area of the small intestine as large as a tennis court. The ileum is the third part of the small intestine. A few remaining nutrients are absorbed here. Like the jejunum, the inner surface of the ileum is covered with villi that increase the surface area for absorption. The large intestine and its functions. From the small intestine, any remaining food wastes pass into the large intestine. The large intestine is a relatively wide tube that connects the small intestine with the anus. Like the small intestine, the large intestine also consists of three parts, the cecum, colon, and rectum. Absorption of water and elimination of wastes. The cecum is the first part of the large intestine, where wastes enter from the small intestine. The wastes are in a liquid state. As they pass through the colon, which is the second part of the large intestine, excess water is absorbed. The remaining solid wastes are called feces. Feces accumulate in the rectum, which is the third part of the large intestine. As the rectum fills, the feces become compacted. After a certain amount of feces accumulate, they are eliminated from the body. A sphincter controls the anus and opens to let feces pass through. Bacteria in the large intestine Trillions of bacteria normally live in the large intestine. Most of them are helpful. In fact, we wouldn't be able to survive without them. Some of the bacteria produce vitamins, which are absorbed by the large intestine. Other functions of intestinal bacteria include controlling the growth of harmful bacteria, breaking down indigestible food components, producing substances that help prevent colon cancer, breaking down toxins before they can poison the body. 
Diseases of the Digestive System Many diseases can affect the digestive system. Three of the most common are food allergies, ulcers, and heartburn. Food allergies occur when the immune system reacts to substances in food as though they were harmful foreign invaders. Symptoms of food allergies often include vomiting and diarrhea. Ulcers are sores in the lining of the stomach or duodenum that are usually caused by bacterial infections. Symptoms typically include abdominal pain and bleeding. Heartburn is a painful burning sensation in the chest caused by stomach acid backing up into the esophagus. The stomach acid may eventually cause serious damage to the esophagus unless the problem is corrected. KQED, Hepatitis C, the silent epidemic. Hepatitis C is a virus that causes cirrhosis of the liver and liver cancer. It's the leading cause for liver transplants in the U.S., and an estimated 4 million Americans have the disease. Current treatments are difficult to tolerate and often ineffective, but recent breakthroughs from scientists may soon produce a cure for the disease that claims more than 10,000 American lives each year. Food and Nutrients Did you ever hear the saying, you are what you eat? It's not just a saying, it's actually true. What you eat plays an important role in your health. Eating a variety of the right types of food promotes good health and provides energy for growth and activity. This is because healthful foods are rich in nutrients. Nutrients are substances the body needs for energy, building materials, and control of body processes. There are six main classes of nutrients. Carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, water, vitamins, and minerals. These six classes are categorized as macronutrients or micronutrients, depending on how much of them the body needs. Macronutrients. Nutrients the body needs in relatively large amounts are called macronutrients. They can include carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and water. All macronutrients except water can be used by the body for energy. The energy in food is measured in a unit called a calorie. The exact amount of each macronutrient that an individual needs depends on many factors, including gender and age. Carbohydrates include sugars, starches, and fibers. Sugars and starches are used by the body for energy. One gram of carbohydrates provides four calories of energy. Fiber, which is found in plant foods, cannot be digested but is needed for good health. Dietary proteins are broken down during digestion to provide the amino acids needed for protein synthesis. Any extra proteins in the diet not needed for this purpose are used for energy or stored as fat. One gram of proteins provides four calories of energy. Lipids provide the body with energy and serve other vital functions. One gram of lipids provides nine calories of energy. You need to eat small amounts of lipids for good health. However, large amounts can be harmful, especially if they contain saturated fatty acids from animal foods. Water is essential to life because biochemical reactions take place in water. Most people can survive only a few days without water. Micronutrients Nutrients the body needs in relatively small amounts are called micronutrients. They include vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are organic compounds that are needed by the body to function properly. Vitamins play many roles in good health, ranging from maintaining good vision to helping blood clot. Vitamin B12 is produced by bacteria in the large intestine. Vitamin D is synthesized by the skin when it is exposed to UV light. Minerals are chemical elements that are essential for body processes. They include calcium, which helps form strong bones and teeth, and potassium, which is needed for normal nerve and muscle function. Good sources of minerals include green leafy vegetables, whole grains, milk, and meats. Vitamins and minerals do not provide energy, but they are still essential for good health. The needed amounts generally can be met with balanced eating. However, people who do not eat enough of the right foods may need vitamin or mineral supplements. Balanced eating. Balanced eating is a way of eating that promotes good health. It means eating the right balance of different foods to provide the body with all the nutrients it needs. Fortunately, you don't need to measure and record the amounts of different nutrients you need each day in order to balance your eating. Instead, you can use my plate and food labels. My pyramid and my plate. My pyramid shows the relative amounts of foods in different food groups you should eat each day.
Each food group represented by a colored band in my pyramid is a good source of nutrients. The wider the band, the more you should eat from that food group. The white tip of my pyramid represents foods that should be eaten only once in a while, such as ice cream and potato chips. They contain few nutrients and may contribute excess calories to the diet. The figure walking up the side of my pyramid represents the role of physical activity in balanced eating. Regular exercise helps you burn any extra energy that you consume in foods and provides many other health benefits. You should be active for about an hour a day most days of the week. The more active you are, the more energy you will use. In June 2011, the United States Department of Agriculture replaced my pyramid with my plate. My plate depicts the relative daily portions of various food groups. The following guidelines accompany my plate. 1. Balancing calories. Enjoy your food, but eat less. Avoid oversized portions. 2. Foods to increase. Make half your plate fruits and vegetables. Make at least half your grains whole grains. Switch to fat-free or low-fat 1% milk. 3. Foods to reduce. Compare sodium in foods like soup, bread, and frozen meals, and choose the foods with lower numbers. Drink water instead of sugary drinks. Food Labels Packaged foods are required by law to carry a nutritional facts label. The labels show the nutrient content and ingredients of foods. Reading labels can help you choose foods that are high in nutrients you need more of, such as proteins, and low in nutrients you need less of, such as fats. You should also look for ingredients such as whole grains, vegetables, and fruits. Avoid foods that contain processed ingredients, such as white flour or white rice. Processing removes nutrients. As a result, processed foods generally supply fewer nutrients than whole foods, even when they have been enriched or fortified with added nutrients. Weight gain and obesity. Any unused energy in food, whether it comes from carbohydrates, proteins, or lipids, is stored in the body as fat. An extra 3,500 calories of energy results in the storage of almost half a kilogram, one pound, of stored body fat. People who consistently consume more food energy than they need may become obese. Obesity occurs when the body mass index is 30 kilograms per square meter or greater. Body mass index, BMI, is an estimate of the fat content of the body. It is calculated by dividing a person's weight in kilograms by the square of the person's height in meters. Obesity increases the risk of health problems such as type 2 diabetes and hypertension. Eating Disorders Some people who are obese have an eating disorder called binge eating disorder in which they compulsively overeat. An eating disorder is a mental illness in which people feel compelled to eat in a way that causes physical, mental, and emotional health problems. Other eating disorders include anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Treatments for eating disorders include counseling and medication. Lesson Summary The digestive system consists of organs that break down food, absorb nutrients, and eliminate waste. The breakdown of food occurs in the process of digestion. Digestion consists of mechanical and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion occurs in the mouth and stomach. Chemical digestion occurs mainly in the small intestine. The pancreas and liver secrete fluids that aid in digestion. Virtually all absorption of nutrients takes place in the small intestine, which has a very large inner surface area because it is covered with millions of microscopic villi. The absorption of water from digestive wastes and the elimination of the remaining solid wastes occur in the large intestine. The large intestine also contains helpful bacteria. Digestive system diseases include food allergies, ulcers, and heartburn. Nutrients are substances that the body needs for energy, building materials, and control of body processes. Carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and water are nutrients needed in relatively large amounts. Vitamins and minerals are nutrients needed in much smaller amounts. Balanced eating promotes good health. My Pyramid and food labels are two tools that can help you choose the right foods for balanced eating. Eating too much and exercising too little can lead to weight gain and obesity. Some people who are obese have an eating disorder. Eating disorders are mental illnesses that require treatment by health professionals.